<laughs> I enjoyed it very much. Uh, and, uh... All right. Very, very excited to have this man on our program. Uh, he is uh, said to be one of the most trusted men in America today. He earns a living as the anchorman of the ABC News program Nightline. Please welcome Ted Koppel. Yeah. That's right. Anymore, right. I appreciate so, you. Uh, how you doing? Thank you very much for coming up here today. It's very nice now, to Now, this is, this is crazy because you're here now, and as soon as we're done, you go back to work? Um, it's even crazier than that. I'm here now, yeah. but I've already been on. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I missed you. Oh, it was terrific. You, you should have been there. Uh, the show comes every night out of, uh, or most out nights, of Washington. out of Washington. Right. So now, isn't this nuts in the middle of your day to pick up and fly to New York and do this and go yeah. back down there? Well, this is, this is like the kind of thing, you don't have kids. Mm, no. 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 Um, <laughs> this is like the kind of thing you do for your kids. Um, we have out there in the audience somewhere, there are a few members of the Nightline staff, and you have got to know that you are the biggest item at Nightline. No. Ever. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, wait, you, you said something that, that sort of, I think, is, is, is kind of an insult. You said, this is the kind of thing you do if you, do you have kids. kids. Now, Ted. No, no, no. You mean you wouldn't have come here if it weren't for the kids? Let me explain. I've been fighting this for a year and a half. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe we have some calls. Let's just go back to the phone. Uh, no, look. Um, <laughs> no, actually, it's not a bad idea. Let's go back to the phone. Now, wait a minute. You've no, been fighting what for I've a year and a half? I mean, look, let's face it, David. When you come on this program, there's only one reason to come on this program, and that is to make a fool of myself in front of the staff. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of times people will say about me and about this show that we get we get folks out here and uh, that I'm rude to them and I'm abusive and that I you're, make fun of them and so forth. Never, over. never rude. Now, abusive. <laughs> sometimes. Now, do you? I've I've seen you at work and you you really take the gloves off. You you uh, the fur starts to fly. Do you ever get people saying, "Geez, Ted, you really should have taken it easy on." Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes they do. But I must say the best the best description of how I feel. Uh, I read the other day when I saw how you felt when you went on the Donahue show. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? It's like wearing somebody else's underwear. That's right. You know, yeah, it was very... <laughs> only, I... in, uh... <laughs> only in this case, I'm not sure they were learned at first. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you uh, another question. I know. Uh, I was watching an interview you did with the people from uh, Oregon, the, the community of... Uh, oh, the, uh, the, the Rajneesh Puram. Yes, sir. Yes. And there was a woman, his spokesman, who, whom I've seen interviewed before. Yes. And she was, she was livid. In, in a matter of seconds, she worked herself into a real snit, and she started using uh, real profanity. I mean, it was no kidding around. No kidding around. Yeah. Now, wh how does that work, that, uh, that you're on live, this all right. comes out? Well, you know, it's late at night. You can get by with, uh, you can get by with a certain... The, the extraordinary thing is that program the one you mentioned actually we've done two uh, with her she's she's gets I more, almost said something it's more public reaction than anything we've ever done before well uh, she's very uh, she's forceful forceful animated yes. and uh, animated and uh, profane and <laughs> now does that do you edit that out for the West Coast in a different no, no, time zone that no, stays well, in? well since we're live anyway there's no point in editing it out for the West Coast we sometimes do entire shows again for the West Coast if something happens I mean we're on at 11:30. Uh, on the East Coast, and if something by 2.30 in the morning happens, uh, we have been known to come back and do the whole program again. Yeah, so that really would be a long day in that case. That's a long but day. what you're saying, uh, you'll, uh, the show goes live one way or the other. You're not going to take little stuff like that out. Uh, have there been issues where you think, I just wish I was home in bed? Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, something else we have in common, uh, David, is uh, I was watching your special on Saturday, and you had uh, Ruth... Uh, Westheimer. Westheimer. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we had that same instance. Uh, I mean, the same, uh, the uh, kind of creative use of a certain vegetable. Um, but but we, what, what, 
what was the topic? What well, was the, uh, the topic was book censorship, and we had a couple of people on from Texas who were explaining why they censor certain books. Uh -huh. And this one guy held the book up and started explaining that this is how you could use a, uh, that vegetable. It was a, it was and, a cucumber, uh, right? It, it was yeah. a cucumber, that's right. And uh, fortunately, we had another guest in Chicago, so I did what, what any courageous, red-blooded host of a program would do. I, Switched to Chicago only to uh, <laughs> only to have the uh, producer say in my ear, "We've just lost the Chicago line." Oh, there you go. So you're, you're so it was back yeah, to Texas yeah. and the cucumber. Yeah. Um, have Have there ever been any any times where you uh, um, felt like you if you had it to do again, you would be not so hard on somebody? Or I know uh, sure. with uh, talking about uh, yeah yeah. Ran for vice president, Mr. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, how quickly they forget, yeah. right? Yeah. No, that's true. I. Uh, I apologized to Congressman for I, I thought I was arrogant. I thought I was too tough. Really? And, and at the time yeah. you were doing it did, it, did you feel like you were being too tough at the time? <laughs> yeah, and it was one of those things. I was so nervous about doing that interview because there were so many things that I wanted to ask her about yeah. uh, and felt that she had not been really toughly questioned about yet. Uh, that I allowed that to get uh, to get the best of me. Mm -hmm. I got a little tougher with it than, than I think I should have. So thinking respect. about it later, did, did you phone her? Did you write her? Did I, you... I didn't until much later. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I spoke to her after the election and uh, apologized. Yeah, and, and did she, uh, was she gracious about it? She that? was very gracious okay. about it. She told me what to do with the program. And no, 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 no. Uh, all right, we're going to do a commercial here, and we'll be uh, right back with uh, Ted Koppel and uh, other things. <laughs> Here this evening, you worked in this building as a page for a uh, in the summer of '59. Yeah, uh, I was a page, and uh, as a matter of fact, in those days, Jack Parr was on. Oh yeah, and I'm glad to see that Jose Millis is still working <laughs> over there. <laughs> you, you, you realize ago. that most of these people have no idea who. Well, maybe well, they know you, who Jack Parr maybe, is. Maybe I, you know Jose Millis may be. Uh, yeah, he was his band leader. Was his yeah, band we hear we have uh, several people who worked on that show, and and we uh, there's one particular staff member who never ceases to tire us with his stories of Jose Mellis, but. <laughs> Um, I understand, uh, in addition to being a fine journalist and an excellent broadcaster, you do some impressions. You're going to... I, I was... Uh, you do some impressions. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that is true. There, there is only one minor limitation yeah. on that. Which would be what? That I never do it on late night television. No, no but um, oh. now, now see, that's what's going to happen. They're going to they're gonna follow you home and beat you silly. Uh, <laughs> now, you, you're, uh, one of your good friends is Henry Kissinger. That's true. Which I did not know, which uh, that must be a, a fascinating friend to have, I would think. It, he's a fascinating friend to have, but I'm not going to do the impression right now. Oh, come on! No, I'm not going to do it. Uh, all right, all right, okay. No, I, and, uh, You're not going to do Henry Kissinger. If, need, if need be, I will take refuge with the king of the moles right under the <laughs> stairs. Uh, now, are there other impressions that you wouldn't mind doing? The, well, um, it's the kind of thing, David, I'll tell you what. Uh, do we have another segment after this, or is this it? It, it depends on whether can, or not you play along. Well, if, <laughs> if I can work my way through this segment and get the hell out of here again without doing it, uh, uh, I, I would rather not, if you don't mind. All right, okay, that's so. fine. I certainly uh, I, I can accept that. But just run down the list. Let's... The list of of impressions. That well, you do. I'll tell you what. I'll t I I do uh, do a moderately good Nixon. Um, I've I've been known on occasion to do William F. Buckley, um, especially when he's on the show. It's very hard. You you find yourself uh, if you have someone with a very distinctive mannerism or speaking. Do you find yourself? No, never. <laughs> That's okay, why you do that's William, why Buckley, you, Richard do William Nixon. Now, these are, Richard but Nixon. you're right. Both of these gentlemen are very uh, deliberately mannered sorts of. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you tell you a quick Nixon story. Since we're, uh, since it looks as though we may have to do this show again with Chernyenko, a couple of years ago when Brezhnev died, we uh, we had President Nixon, President Ford, President Carter. He's another one uh, that I do occasionally. You do Carter also. Oh, Carter. Yeah. Wow. Um, you're ready for Vegas. Almost. <laughs> And we had we had Kissinger and Haig on the program, and the program went on and on and on. One of the uh, one of the staffers pointed out that it was the show that would not die. We got off the air mm -hmm. about 1:30 in the morning, 
And I got home about 3 and got to bed around 4, and at 8.30 in the morning, the phone rang. And uh, my wife, who's an attorney, was already off at work. The kids were in school, and there was a very distinctive voice on the other end of the phone, and it was kind of cutting through the haze. Hello, Ted? <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I said, uh, yes. And the voice said, uh, President Nixon here. <laughs> Having all my wits about me, I said, good morning, Mr. President, what can I do for you? And I swear to God, the first words out of his mouth were, I didn't realize you got up this early. <laughs> um, that's terrific. That's it. You, you want to move yeah. on? You want to try one little, no, one little no, other? I mean, that's... No, one that's, more. What? Yeah. Do you do anybody not in politics? Um, no, who? Buckley? Oh, do Buckley's. a little Buckley. Um, are those staff members? Uh, I, at, at, at this particular point, uh, All right. I, I think it would be most inopportune. <laughs> Very good. You're very good, and uh, also you're you're terrific on the air. That's why we wanted to have you on here, and and I'm I'm certainly glad we had the opportunity why, to meet. Why, why do I have the feeling that I'm not going to be on the air much longer? I mean, if I had not done the, I'll tell you what, David. May I just insert one thing before I leave? Sure. Uh, as long as it's not a cucumber. But you know. <laughs> I've acted terribly, and I apologize. Sure. Sure. I, um, I've been watching your program for years. And I watched the special you had on on, uh, on Saturday. And it seems to me that there are certain things to which your audience reacts particularly well. Now, obviously, you don't need advice in how to run your program. But... Let me just show you the kind of thing I have in mind. Um, if you can... <laughs> it's, a, it's a question of... of I, I watched it... Oh, the right. other yeah. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I had a hard time... I had a hard time telling whether that was the high point of the broadcast or, or, or tossing the roadrunner... Yeah, I know. Right? I know. That Roadrunner you know, doll. It's that interesting was... that you didn't want to do the impressions, but you came but prepared I was to, do to, to do that. To do that. Well, that's strange. Well, uh, I'd, listen, I'd, I'd, I'd like you to have that. I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep this, but just I know, I know it's case. nuts for you to be flying back and forth like this, and we really do appreciate I it. Do. And I've been a big fan of yours, and I think you're doing a lot of wonderful stuff. It's mutual. There. Thanks, Frank. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll uh, be right back here after. Uh, <laughs> 